Jesus went to where all of the people had gathered in that part of the temple. He sat down to people watch. And as he watched the people, he had to call his disciples over. Guys, guys, come over here. You've got, you got to see this. And there in that, in that moment, it was a private moment with Jesus, he taught them he said, you see all of the, the rich putting in large sums of money, right? It's, it's impressive. Lots of people are applauding. Guys, it's only a very tiny percentage of their overall wealth. What I want you to see is this widow right here. Oh, she just put in a couple coins. But she put in everything that she had to live on. She gave everything. That was the point that Jesus wanted his disciples to hear and to see in giving everything. Now, I don't know if you have a moment where you sit down as a family and you talk about what you're going to bring to the temple, what you're going to make the offerings ring with, and, and if if you even, I know it's kind of rare that we have those discussions, but maybe you have, and, and when you're doing so, Maybe it's just even in your own head because you write the checks, all right? And, and you decide, okay, we don't want to be stingy because it's God, you know. He loves us. We love him. But we don't want to give too much either because we have a lot of projects we're trying to do. And so, you know, we, we look for that Goldilocks point where it's just right for God and just right for us. And we write the check. Okay. So we're all on the same page. Well, we would stay on that same page if it wasn't for this widow. She put in everything, totally blowing our sensibilities of what's the Goldilocks point, you know. It's like, oh, man. Now, I know it's kind of risky talking about money in church. Okay, I know that our defenses, I sit there too, okay. I, I know our defenses kind of go up. It's like, oh man, is, this, is that that time of year where we talk about, oh, it is, it's November. <laughs> oh, okay. I know that our defenses come up and, and we, we go into widow mentality. Oh, not this widow at the, the temple, the widow at Zarephath. You know, that's the one that Elijah called out to. Elijah's far away from home, and he doesn't have a place to stay or food to eat. And God told him, hey, I got this. I got this. I prepared a woman's heart to, to help you out. And so he doesn't know who it is, and he goes to the, the gate of the city. He sees the first woman, and he says, hey, can I have some water, and, and can I have some bread? And, and she's like gathering sticks, and I can just see her face just dropping the sticks Oh, oh, you want me to give you bread? I'll tell you what me is like. I'm going to go home. I'm going to take this little bit of dough, and I'm going to bake it with this sticks here. I'm going to eat it, and then we're going to die, okay? Is, we, yeah, I mean, God prepared her heart, okay? Wow. Um, so she's all prepared, right? And, and, and there is this widow mentality in us that there's just not enough. Now you think about when you got your first job and you're trying to live on that first income and salary, right? There literally probably wasn't enough, right? To do the house, the groceries, and fabulous vacation you wanted to take, all right? You just couldn't do it all. But then you made a little more and you made a little more. Maybe you've, you're making twice, three times, four times what you originally made, but it's still there, isn't it? It doesn't matter how much you make, there's not enough. Right? I mean, it's just, it doesn't, they asked Rockefeller, do you have enough money? He says, well, no. Well, how much? Do you need more? He says, well, just a little more. Okay. Well, what was Jesus actually trying to teach us with this woman this widow at the, the temple. You know, when Jesus talked about money, most people scratched their heads and couldn't make heads or tails of it. Is he being serious? Is he being literal here? Or is he making some kind of, you know, big guru principle moment here about money? 
You know, a rich guy came to Jesus, and that was his title, the rich guy. And Jesus said to him, hey, rich guy, why don't you go sell everything, give it to the poor, you come follow me. Now, don't worry about your riches, you'll still have treasures in heaven. Now, the rich guy, he went away sad, right? But who else is listening to this? His disciples. And they freaked out. It's like, whoa, who then could be saved? And Jesus, he answers them. And, and keep in mind, this is my paraphrase. He goes, yep, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? <laughs> but he doesn't back away from it. He doesn't like soft sell it or spin it. You know, this is what I'm really talking about. He goes full steam ahead and says, Children, gather around. How hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Well, that just made no sense to anyone. And to be quite honest, none of us would take Jesus seriously when it comes to his money talk if what he was actually talking about was money, like your checkbook, like the dollars and cents. Jesus was talking about your treasure, as in where your heart is, there is your treasure. I don't know if you knew this or not, but God made you in such a way in your heart to have a treasure. Not a treasure chest full of money, but the one thing that is just so precious and priceless. You're just infatuated with it. You've you, you, you got to have that treasure. You, you can't imagine your life without the treasure. You would guard it with your life. You would defend it to the death. You just love it. You're almost obsessed about the treasure. That's what treasure is. And God made it so that you would have this kind of desires. The problem isn't that we have to have a treasure and that there's this thing we got to have. The problem is we just don't know what to treasure. Right? There's just so many really important things in life. There's family. But there's also money. Right? I mean, lots of people are pursuing financial gains, and they're teaching other people how to do it. They're writing books. You're going to their seminars. But other people, it's more refined, and it's, it's like that I become the best whatever, the best at this, the, the, the expert at this, where people come to me, the guru. Whatever it is, we just, we just don't know what that treasure should be, and so we've pursued it in all different kinds of ways. And the thing about a treasure is that there can only be one. There are many important things, but you, your heart only has the capacity for one thing to be the thing. And everything else, it just falls in line behind it in its importance. It's, you've got treasures, number one, and then there's a two and a three and a four. Well, Jesus, he comes down really hard on the teachers of the law because they have the wrong treasure. Some of them have treasured money and they just gobbled up. The actual word in the text is they gobbled up widows' homes. They've taken the last two coins and then since you cannot pay your mortgage, they went to court and they did it all legal and proper and they took their house. Others, it was prestige and honor. Look, everyone, it's rabbi so-and-so. Oh, rabbi, sit at our table. What do you know today, rabbi? And they love to be called their titles, and they love to be seen, and they love to be loved. Jesus came down so hard on the very people who should have God as their treasure. Because they knew everything about him. They knew all of his laws and rules and they taught others. They were the most spiritual people in that community. So that if you aspired to be someone close to God, you aspired to be like them. And Jesus held them up and shined a bright light on them. 
so that everyone would know these are the men who will be punished most severely. Not because of their sins, because their hearts should have treasured God, did not. Instead, Jesus holds up on a pedestal for everyone to see who actually would desire to be with God, who would desire to be his own. And he says, this woman, she is the one. It's not because she put in a few coins. It's not even because she gave in 100%, all that she had to live on. She is exalted by Jesus because this is what a heart looks like when it has God for its treasure. The money that she threw into the treasury, she wasn't just tossing her coins into a wishing well hoping to hit big with the God lottery. You know, that God somehow is like, whoa, we'll pay you back for that. You know, She simply was giving what she had, knowing that she was not in a true poverty state. She has her treasure. My God loves me. He is trustworthy. He is good and right. I am in good hands. So Jesus motions for his disciples to come over and and, and to, to witness in a very quiet and humble way This beautiful woman, made beautiful by the treasure in her heart and by what she did and what she gave. This woman's story is recorded for us that you and I might examine our hearts. That we might really consider, well, what's inside of me? What do I really have to have? What am I pursuing at all costs? What would I be totally lost as a person if I did not have? What is my love of loves, priceless and precious? As you examine your heart, and there you find a poverty of God, and that God really isn't that big a deal for you, and that you don't really think much about Him during the rest of the week, and and you don't really listen to him or or talk to him you don't rely upon him for everything and every decision and and you you're not in a position of, of humility before him but he's just he's one of the big things in your life but he's not the thing if you find as you examine your heart that you're more in the group of the people that will be punished most severely well the solution is obviously not to give more money to the church. Anybody that that would use this text to say, be like the widow, she gave 100%. Squint at them. That will not, that will not change your heart. It won't be a solution either just to know God more. The very people who knew him inside and out, who had memorized his word, who taught people his word, were the ones who will be severely punished. It's not even being about spiritual. You know, today the big thing is I'm a spiritual person. But if you don't have God as the treasure, all that you know of God's or God, all of that you're spiritually doing of prayer and disciplines will be meaningless without the treasure. So, how do, you, how do you receive this treasure? Now, I want to be very clear that we're not talking about saving faith here. As I look around, I, I know that all of you have been baptized. We're not talking about, oh gosh, you're going to miss heaven here. We're talking about your treasure. That one place in your heart that is number one. Your love of loves. How how does this change? Well, it it doesn't change with a big show emotion of like, I've given my life, or or it doesn't change with like, I'm going to go to Nepal and, and, and serve the homeless. It doesn't change by any big event. It it begins with a very simple and quiet conversation with Jesus. 
And it's, it's this. Jesus, I have a treasure. And it's not you. Now that doesn't fix anything. But it prepares the heart for what comes next. See, the fix isn't something that you do, but you receive. The fix comes from actually hearing from Jesus, the one who is not your treasure. Now, how can we hear from Jesus? But like God sent the prophet Elijah, so he has sent me to speak his words in his stead. So that as you hear these words, they're Jesus' words to you. So hear Jesus right now. The first thing he says to you is don't be afraid. You just told God he's not your treasure. Don't be afraid. I forgive you your sin. I give you a new heart where I am the treasure. I come and I dwell in you and I delight in you and I treasure you. The reason that God created our hearts to have a treasure is that we've been created in His image. He has a treasure. You're like Him. And guess who His treasure is? You are my treasure. Did He not give up everything for His love of love? He gave up His only Son, Jesus, into death for His treasure. As you receive, as you are treasured by God, you really have to go home now and live in these words. Just like Elijah sent the the widow of Zarephath home now to to see that the flour and the oil is not going to run out. The flour and the oil of God's love for you will not run out. And he will be enough. And all the other really important things in life, they begin to find their proper place and proportion behind your true treasure. So that if there comes a time when you put in 100% of whatever it is, you haven't been impoverished. You have your treasure. And if everything is taken from you, your health, your family, whatever it is, you have your treasure because you are treasured. Now I know that it takes so much more than just hearing it once. So what I did for you, I I prepared a little flour and oil for you to take home. And there's a a purple piece of paper on the uh, entryway, and of course I can't find it now. And this is what it says. I want you to take this home. I want you to memorize it and learn it, but at least take it home. And it says these things. It says a reality statement first. It says, I am one in whom Christ dwells and in whom he delights. You are the treasure. That's a reality statement. The second is a request. Jesus, lead me in treasuring you. Lead me, I'm going to try it again. Lead me in a life where you are my treasure. Jesus, lead me in a life where you are my treasure. This is on a sheet. This is flour. This is oil that will not run out. I invite you to bury it in your heart and to say it every day as God will use these words to bless your heart so that you value more and more the treasure that he has given to you. So that you live more and more in that request that he is the treasure. They're on the entryway. Memorize them. And be blessed by God. Amen. We confess our faith.